Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Shepherd's Corner. Having conversations with our Archbishop Charles Jason Gordon, and you know he's just come back from Rome, um, where there was the world meeting of families. When the church was formed, it happened at home. I like that headline. When church was formed, it happened at home. And we had our first session last week, and this week we're looking at connections and configurations in the domestic church. And Archbishop is taking us into rights, family rights. So my question to him is, Archbishop G, why family rights in the domestic church? That's a great question, you know, because every family have rights. But before we get to the rights, I want to say, start by saying, I've written before that every family on pilgrimage to be fully a domestic church has rights. So what's every family on pilgrimage to be a domestic church? You know, you, you used to run a 5K, correct? Correct. Ran the marathon too. You ever had Granny Lucas run any marathon with you? No, she ran past me. <laughs> but, but you all were in the same marathon. We were in the same marathon. So old Granny Lucas <laughs> pass you and finish before you and was closer to the finish line for the, for the whole marathon than you could ever have been. But you were in the same marathon. Yeah, but not only that, when I was about to stop, because I had hit the wall at, at, um, at mile number 20, she said, Sonny boy, don't give up. Where a horse could go, a donkey could go to. <laughs> so you pick up and you keep going. And I kept going. I, I followed her all the way to the finishing line. So both the horse and the donkey <laughs> finished the marathon. <laughs> Correct. And the point, the point is this, and this is a point that, that people have asked since our last show. Not every configuration or not every household is configured to the ideal of the domestic church. All right. But every household, insofar as they are seeking union with God and seeking to live a Trinitarian love, are on pilgrimage. Mm -hmm. Some might be just at the starting line and others might be very close to the finishing line. But if we understand that the households are all on pilgrimage, the, the question that we have to ask ourselves is, how do we help every household to come closer to the finishing line or closer to the ideal of the domestic church? I like that, like what you just said there, because you know, earlier on you asked me about what kind of feedback we got, you know, based on last week's show. And there were a couple of couples who called and they said it gave them encouragement because they weren't, they were in a kind of a matrifocal um, type home. Some were right. in a kind of a, what we will call a common law relationship. So I got, I got feedback from both types. <laughs> and they said it gave them encouragement because they know they were a little scared. Some they know they weren't. Um, perfect in terms of what the church or what God would like them to be, but they were trying. And this gave them encouragement not to give up. And so it's like, it's like um, granny and you, when you hit the wall. Where a horse could go, a donkey could go to. Could go to. <laughs> and it's important because if we understand that all the configuration of households are on pilgrimage, some mightn't even have hit the starting line as yet. Some might have hit the starting line uh, well underway. Some might be very close to a finishing line. But insofar as people or the family or the household, insofar as they have a desire for union with God and a desire for the sacramental life of the church in any way possible, and a desire for living a loving relationship, then they are on pilgrimage. And, and that's the concept I want us to, to hear. Because 
The other concept we use is, well, that family, them living in sin, or that family, they, they living in grace. And we don't know the family that we believe living in grace might actually be um, in terrible domestic violence or whatever it is, we don't know. Right. And the family that we believe living in sin, there might be absolutely no sex happening in that relationship. And they actually might be living as brothers and sisters mm -hmm. and doing their best to, to bring their children up as good Catholics. Yeah. We, we don't know. Mm -hmm. But what, what, we, what we do know is that in so far as we have families on pilgrimage, then we have to, to help them to be on pilgrimage to the domestic church. Right. And, and what is the ideal? The ideal is simple. A man and a woman married, open to procreation and the education and the formation of their children as, as Catholics. That, that's really the ideal. And, and that, that man and the woman who are married, lifelong commitment, in a love that is reflective of the Trinitarian love, is openly forming their children for discipleship of Jesus Christ. That, that, that's really where, we, where the ideal is. Now, is every family at an equal starting point? No. But every household should start from wherever they are and ask themselves, how do I get closer to the ideal of the domestic church? Right. How do I get closer to the ideal? It, it, and, and what's important from my perspective is not that every householder, eh? is every household on pilgrimage. Pilgrimage, yeah, yeah. Because there will be some households of sacramentally married people and some household of common law and some households of all other kinds of configurations where there is no pilgrimage mm -hmm. to the domestic church. Yeah. So it's every household is on pilgrimage really is, is what you have to start, start to speak about. And what does that pilgrimage look like? So, I mean, I know single moms who bring up their children to be good Catholics. Yeah. Their life might have been a mess. They might have made all kinds of mistakes mm -hmm. or they might have been married and been divorced, mm -hmm. whatever the configuration, but, but they want their children to be disciples of Jesus Christ and, and, and they will sacrifice for that. I consider that a family on a, a household on a pilgrimage. Wow. And they are, you know, they are, I mean, and I've, I've seen those, I've experienced those. I did a recent um, wedding where they waited for 40 years and they got married. He was 90 when he got married. Yes. And I, I'm I, I, I know that. Um, that I know that. The, the, the other piece of it is the ideal will always be the ideal. Yeah. Because that's God's intention. And, and what is it, that intention? That is why a man must leave his mother and father and cling to his wife and the two must become one flesh. They're no longer two, therefore, but they're one flesh. That, that is the ideal. Yeah. And, and that ideal is what we have to point everybody towards. But some people, because of choices that are made in their life, can no longer come to that ideal. Does it mean they end the pilgrimage and they sit down and they, they do nothing? And they say, well, children, we, we got to raise you badly. No, the ideal means that even if we've made bad, bad, bad life, life choices and we could never arrive at that ideal, we still have to get as close to it as we humanly can. Yeah. That, that's the, the, the idea of pilgrimage. And we still have to do the best we can with all the constraints that we have. That's the idea of pilgrimage. So I just wanted to start with, with that, that mm -hmm. first line of, of, the, of the text every family on pilgrimage to be fully a domestic church has rights. Now I could start now with your rights, because I know you want to know about your rights. And that's R-I-T-E-S. And there are three rights. The right of relationships, the right of rituals, that's work and play, talk and, and play, 
and the right of reaching out. And you can look at conversations with Archbishop J. Know Your Rights, September 8th, 2020, where I first wrote about this. So there's a part two to that, because there are some things I, I, I picked up on the, on the, um, in the world meeting of the family that really opened wide, a wider definition and opened a wider, um, for me, a wider embrace of, of the, the knowing your rights. So these three rights move the family from a sociological unit towards a domestic church. So if you want to know what was the engine, was the engine, the engine is in knowing your rights and the three rights of the domestic church. That, that's really the engine for moving the, the, um, the sociological unit or the household towards becoming a, a domestic church. So the recent world meeting of, of families in Rome, Gregory and Lisa Popcat added another layer to the rights in their keynote address. Um, and their address was the domestic church and synodality towards a new ecclesiology through the liturgy of domestic church life. And here's what they said. The family as domestic church must have its own liturgy. Wow. The liturgy of domestic church life. The family, must the have family as a domestic church yeah. must, must have its own liturgy. And that is the liturgy of domestic church life. Well, boy, you have to untangle that because once we think of liturgy, you know, we think of liturgy within the church walls. I'm talking about when we get into church and the liturgy, we will have a wedding liturgy, a mass liturgy, and so on. But here you're talking about the liturgy of domestic church life. Yeah. So the podcast commenting on, on this text say, through this lens, we see that the small family practices that make up the spiritual framework of, of the liturgy of domestic church life gives families both implicit and explicit means by which they can cooperate with the grace of all the sacraments, especially the Eucharist, and be transformed into dy dynamic domestic churches. That's actually a... A, a quotation from Pope Francis, mm -hmm. that all of the small things, all of the small practices yeah, yeah. make up the spiritual framework of the liturgy of domestic church life. All of the small spiritual practices. You know, the grace before meals, mm -hmm. the grace yeah. after meals, the family rosary, mm -hmm. the, the prayer on your way to school in the morning, yeah. the, the night prayer before children go to sleep, mm -hmm. the, the blessing of a child before they go out, mm -hmm. the holding hands and saying our father, mm -hmm. the, I mean, all the little, little rites and rituals that families develop over a period of time they, they all are, are the spiritual framework of the liturgy of domestic church life. Yeah, that's beautiful. I remember even passing in front of a church as you're driving past a church. You know, my father was... The the sign of the cross. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, one time. Yeah. Because you're, you're reverencing Christ yeah. who is there. Correct, correct. You're reverencing Christ who is there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the analogy, and it's a beautiful analogy, I think, if the Eucharist is the body and blood of Christ, then the domestic church are the arteries that bring that grace into the whole world through the living body of Christ. Wow, that is beautiful. That is so beautiful. If the Eucharist is the body and blood of Christ, then domestic churches are the arteries. Wow. <laughs> and here it is. And the I arteries that bring that grace into the whole world sure. through the living body of Christ. Wow. So just as the Eucharist is the body of Christ mm. and preeminently the presence of Christ in this world, so too we who gather, we are the body of Christ yeah. 
And in so far as we are the body of Christ spread throughout the world, we are bringing that body and that blood, that grace, that sanctifying love. We are bringing that into the world through the family, wherever the families are. As, as you, I mean, I teach first aid, so I know how important it is to have arteries because that is the part that those the artery is filled with the oxygen that it gets from the heart to take it to all other parts of the body. That's the life giving side. That's the that's the life, the life blood of, of, of so you take the arteries out, the body collapses, correct? But the, wherever the arteries are, yeah. the blood is oxygenated. Correct. And life is happening. Correct. And it, it, it's, a, it's really a, a beautiful image. Yeah, I like it. Because we are the body of Christ. Yeah. And as body of Christ, we are conduits of that grace of the living body, of the living Christ, who, who course, whose blood and, and love courses within our veins. So it's it's really a um, a wonderful and a very a very dynamic image. But you know, you talked about first aid, but Pope Francis also said that the family is the nearest field hospital. <laughs> wow, they're the closest paramedics you're going to find. Yes, lovely man. The family is the nearest field hosp hospital. You know, there, there, there's some really beautiful images here. So from, from this perspective, they argue that the liturgy of the domestic church life is an actual liturgy. Yeah, yeah. Th this is important to understand. It's not, it's not metaphorically liturgical, that it is an actual church liturgy. And, and the role of the domestic church in the transformation of the church and society is vital because really and truly, when the, at the end of the mass, the priest says, go and missions the congregation to go, is to go and love and serve the Lord. That is to go and bring God's love and transformation into the world. And how powerful so, when you have whole families that come to church? You know, yes. they, they, they're sent out on mission now, you know, go out and yeah, be the yeah, arteries, yeah. go out and be the, uh, go out be the field hospitals for the church. You know, there, there, there are some parishes I go to and, and I know the families and you just, you see, you know, families with a couple of kids, you know, five, six kids and, and, and everyone helping the other one and they're all, they all, you know, rousing each other, but, but, but having great, great fun together. And, and yeah. that's, that's where, that's where the life is. Mm. And that's why the, the sacramental marriage is the ideal. But we are all on the pilgrimage. Yeah. That's that's what that's what we and 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 every family on the pilgrimage has rights. Every family on the pilgrimage has rights, and and that's really where we where we where we have to to look at. So the root of liturgy is is public worship of God. The mass is clearly liturgy. So are the other six sacraments. They are all public worship in the strict sense of the word. So what about the liturgy of domestic church life? Is it public? Is it worship of God? That's the real, the real test, you know, that's the real question. In what way can we call domestic, the liturgy of domestic church life all these little acts of reverence and piety and devotion and love that, that punctuate the, the, the life of the family. In, in what sense can we call these public worship? And in what sense can we call this worship of God? And that's really the, um, the, the real question. And here the popcats follow Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger in his text, The Spirit of the Liturgy. First, Cardinal Ratzinger says, God must institute liturgy. It's not man-made. <laughs> Second, he defines liturgy as a particular act of worship given to us by God himself to heal the damage sin does 
to our relationships with God and each other. Wow. A particular act of worship wow. given to us by God himself to heal the damage sin does to our relationship with God and with others. How do you like that? Listen, I, I had to read that over, you know what I mean? I was just saying, wow, he says that God must institute the liturgy. And I, that, that to me was, was, was such a key there, you know, even on this domestic church journey, that God must institute liturgy. And, and I, I'm, I'm thinking of what you just said, not every family is on that pilgrimage, but those right. that, uh, you know, are God-guided, you know, even though they're struggling, even though they're matriculated, yeah, yeah. even though they're, 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 they're coming they might, over. They might have barely crossed, they might have yeah. barely crossed the starting line. Yes. And everybody has finished it. Yeah. But they are, in so far as, then we have to ask, you know, what, what is, what is the, the worship? What is the worship? What is the worship? So con continuing the case for this liturgy, the podcast say, at the dawn of creation, God wove the implicit practice we collectively call the liturgy of domestic church life into the design of the human family. Wow. God wove the implicit practices we collectively call the liturgy of domestic church life. That's beautiful. And these practices have not been shown by, have now been, not only been shown by social science research to enable families throughout history and across every culture to flourish on a human level, but live prayerfully and intentionally, these habits in equip family to participate in the love that flows from the heart of the Trinity. Oh. So on the deep. sociological level, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These, these practices of love allow a kind of human flourishing. Mm -hmm. On the theological level, when there's an intentionality about a devotion, a love, a giving of ourselves to God, then there, there is an equipping of the families to participate in the love that flows from the heart of the Trinity. Where does, where does a child first learn about love? Yeah, in the or family. Not. Yeah, in the family. Or not. Yeah. And so if the family is a nurturing, loving household, then the child learns very early what love really is about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If, the, if the family is made up of adults who are self-sacrificing. Correct. Wow. Yeah. Then the children learn really, really early what Trinitarian love starts to look like. If the family is made up of adults who are completely selfish, and only concerned about themselves and, and, and not sacrificing for the children or for each other, then the children are damaged for life. I, I wanna say that, that, that that's so important because coming out of that love that they learn, you know, they too are formed and shaped by that and therefore they pass it on also to their family. So it's a kind of a, it, this, this artery continues to go out into the generations. It regenerates, oh. I would like to say it regenerates itself. Oh, it boy. regenerates itself. Oh boy, I like that. And, and, and it is in that sense that we could talk about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit coming to us and making their home in us. Yeah. And, 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 and where does it begin? It really begins in your family. You learn love or you learn not to love, you learn it from the family. I've, I've known kids who come from really bizarre families. And at the same time, they turn out 
really amazing. Eh? Mm. And I know kids who come from really amazing families. And they continue to bizarre. So there's no guarantee on anything. But here's what, it, what, what, what it, it's saying. Each of us has a, has a choice that we have to make. Are we going, do we want to be on the pilgrimage or not? And so far as we choose to be on the pilgrimage, then we, we choose for our families to participate in the love that flows from the heart of the Trinity. And so far as that's what we do. Yeah. The very foundation of society and the church, you know, that is the very foundation of the society and the church, the family, the domestic church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? So what is good for family life is what makes family a domestic church. Mm -hmm. What is good for family life? A man and a woman who are in self-sacrificial love for each other, mm -hmm. who commit themselves exclusively to each other for the, for the rest of their lives and the fruitful union of their commitment and their love brings forth children into this world mm -hmm. who they raise as disciple of Jesus Christ through the education of their children and the discipling of their children. That, that's the idea. And, and that's the best thing for the, for the, for the society. It's the, best, it's the best thing for family. It's the best thing for society. And I will say that, that that's what the domestic church is. And, and if every household enters on pilgrimage towards the domestic church, then the, 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 the nation itself will go through a wonderful time of transformation. Because as families become more and more a domestic church, love and care and sharing and mission and Trinitarian love will become more and more part and parcel of the experience of the child in, in, the, daily, in the daily life. So we're talking about the liturgy of the domestic church. We, we are seeing, I, I mean, and all around, even, I mean, even today in listening to television and, and all of the interviews and so on, everybody seems to know fundamentally that the domestic church is where it happens. You know, yeah, and yeah. for the strengthening of society, this domestic church also has to be strengthened. You Correct. know, and it has to be on that pilgrimage, like what you said. Correct. Because in the, the domestic church, in its ideal state, you have the deep bonds of relationships that mirror Trinitarian love. You have the deep bonds of relationships. It is that relationship of husband and wife. Yeah that mirrors or that is a sacramental um, sign of the love of Christ for his church. Remember, father loves, holds nothing back. Yeah. Father gives everything to son. Son yeah. holds nothing back. Son gives everything to spirit. Spirit holds nothing back. Spirit gives everything to the disciple. That Trinitarian love where, where the love is always an, a flowing out of to the other. That that Trinitarian love, that's a deep bond of relationship. And when, when, when a family has that deep bond of relationship, Trinitarian love is starting to be mirrored. Okay. And then the, 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 the family is becoming domestic church. And, 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 and all those watching, you know, this is so critical, this conversation Archbishop Jay is having with us, you know, the popcats and, and, and this whole world meeting of families you know, it is that agape love, that Trinitarian love. I mean, there's Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. And how many times we are we feel that in our relationship that we are in that Garden of Gethsemane. But do we say, not my will, but yours be done? And that's the whole thing. Is always we want our will to be done and not think of the greater good. And the greater good was, yes, Jesus had to have that, that agape love, not my will, Father, but yours be done. And, and it's God's will is always for the love, for that Trinitarian love to exist. And that's what the family, that's what the family displays when 
when when father um, lays down his life for mom, mm. and mom lays down life for father, and father and mother lay down their life for their children. That's that's what that's what nurtures the next generation yeah. Yeah. to be open to become the best that they could become as saints. I think even John, so, John Paul said something like the, the family or the husband and wife, that relationship, you know, is the closest image to the Trinity that can happen. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and John Paul makes the analogy between the, on, on earth, the relationship between husband and wife is the visible sign of Trinitarian love that we will have. But the, the podcast conclude liturgy of domestic church life is the primordial liturgy God instituted to heal the damage of, that sin inflicts on the human family, the very foundation of society and of the church. I'm saying it again, the liturgy of domestic church life is the primordial liturgy God instituted to heal the damage sin inflicts on the human family, the very foundation of society and the church. So these rights that we're gonna explore a little bit are, are, are the very healing balm mm -hmm. that God gives after the fall. Right. And that healing balm that God gives is what society needs most if civilization is going to be strong. Because yeah. the family is a load-bearing wall of civilization. Yeah. So these rights that we're going to explore are really vital for salvation of the nations because the lifeblood of Jesus Christ flowing through the arteries of the domestic church bring healing to the nations wherever the domestic church becomes what it is. Family become what you are, a domestic church. No, Family I'm become what you are, a mission. Family become what you are, a sacramental sign of God's love for his people. Now, 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 right here, you know, normally, Archbishop G, you like to, at a point like this, you like to drop something on us and tell us, well, you know, I have a book coming. I, I just want, oh, I just want to, you know, I, want, I just feel like you have a book coming for us that will help oh, us on this journey. Why you would think I have a book coming, eh? Yeah. Eh? I just feel like, oh. you know, we're in this thing so, you, I'm in this thing so long with you. I feel you, you, you have something coming. Missioning the domestic, people, what did I tell you? I knew he had something up. Missioning the domestic church, transforming the Caribbean family. Amen. By the most, yep. by Dr. the most reverend Charles Jason God. Wow. And it's only on, um, it's only on e-copy. Uh -huh. So, if you want a copy of it, you can go to catholictt.org and on Catholic TT, you'll get your copy, your free copy. Free? free copy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm giving this one away. <laughs> this one I'm giving away. This one I'm giving away. Connections and configurations, the domestic church. And, and here we're talking about the rights. And Archbishop G is getting into the rights. To me, it's almost like the recipe. You know, the recipe for building this domestic church that's on that journey. You know, and we need it now in our country. We're seeing it. They fall out, the we, murders, the craziness. We need it more than anything else, we need it. So, liturgy, church, and priesthood. But the, the liturgy of domestic church life is also an actual liturgy, say the popcats because of the close connection between liturgy, church, and priesthood, we have to look at that a little more carefully. For Catholics, liturgy is integral to church, and liturgy does not happen without a priesthood. <laughs> and more than that, 
liturgy wasn't invented. It was, it was made and given by God. Wow. So when we talk in the liturgy of domestic church life, we're talking about all these things. So here's what the catechism of the Catholic church states. The Christian family constitutes a specific revelation and realization of ecclesial communion. And for this reason, it can and should be called a domestic church. It is a community of faith, hope, and charity. It assumes singular importance in the church, as is evident in the New Testament. So once the catechism say, says that the Christian family is a domestic church, it doesn't say it is like a domestic church. It is an, analog an analogy of a domestic church. They say it is a domestic church. Then if it is a domestic church, it must have a priesthood. It must have a liturgy. It must have a priesthood. It must have a, a, a liturgy. So the domestic church is a church in every sense of the word. It ain't like a church. They say it, it is, it constitutes. And if it is a church, then it has a liturgy and it has a priesthood. And we have to remember all the baptized constitute a royal priesthood anointed by the Holy Spirit and dedicated to God. Wow. Say it again. Eh? All the baptized constitute a royal priesthood anointed by the Holy Spirit and dedicated to God. Wow, 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 wow. Going right back, I'm going right back to the sacrament, the sacrament in the domestic church in, in, in last week's in last week's presentation, last week's conversation, where you yeah. talked about the sacrament entering the, 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 the domestic church through baptism, the baptism of the, the children, the baptism of the parents. Here you have it. And the usual way of the sacrament entering the domestic church is, is, is through the marriage of the of the couple. Yeah. Yeah. As usual, that's the ideal. That's the ideal. But sometimes the first entrance of the of the of sacraments into the into that household is through the through the baptism of the children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's powerful. But all the baptized constitute a royal priesthood. So Lumen Gentium states, therefore, all the disciples of Christ persevering in prayer and praising God should present themselves as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. Everywhere on earth, they must bear witness to Christ and give an answer to those who seek an account of the hope of eternal life, which is in them. All the disciples of Christ persevering in prayer, come and could you pray with me for one hour? You know, could you pray with mm -hmm. me for one hour? And praising mm -hmm. God should present themselves as a living sacrifice. And that's what he did. And he was only able to do spell. that. Yes. Holy and pleasing to God. Everywhere on earth, they must bear witness to Christ. They are trees again. Mm -hmm. And they must give answer to those who seek an account of the hope of eternal life, which is in them. And they must give an answer to those who seek an mm -hmm. account of that hope of eternal life which is in them. Everywhere on yeah, earth yeah. they must bear witness to Christ. Everywhere on earth they must bear witness to Christ. We are called to bear witness to Christ. Again, the arteries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the liturgy of the domestic church life is a real liturgy because yeah. through it, the family configures itself to Christ. It is prayer in its pure form, an offering of our bodies as a living sacrifice to Christ. As we die daily to self, to grow in love for each member of the family. And, and, you know, you could either choose to go to the LCM. Lewis Common Multiple. <laughs> or? The HCF. 
the HCF, the <laughs> highest common factor. Yeah, yeah. And, and at every moment, you come to the sink, you have one glass in your hand that you just had some water in. And you look down in the sink and six more glasses there. You could make it seven LCM. Oh, that's right. Or you could make it, you could leave it as six LCM. Or you could make it zero HCF. Highest common factor. You have to choose constantly whether in the, in the family, you have to constantly choose. Am I going to the lowest common denominator or am I going to the highest common factor? Which one am I going to do? Which one am I going to do? And, and it's a thousand times a day now. That's the liturgy. <laughs> that, is, that is the liturgy. A thousand times a day. You know the liturgy well. You know it better than me. <laughs> and the more children you have, trust me, is it more, more is it more high churches? <laughs> but 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 you you constantly have to choose. Am I going to lift this up? Yeah, yeah. To Christ, or am I going to? Why do you always? Da, 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 so you're either going to lift it up or you're going to go down to the lowest common. And each time in the domestic church, we choose to lift it up. What we choose to do is offer ourselves as a living sacrifice to Christ. Each time we choose. And, 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 and those little acts of sacrifice that Pope Francis spoke about that, that constitute the framework of the liturgy of domestic church life. That's, that's what we're talking about when we're talking about knowing your rights. Well, well you, 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 you're taking me to, 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 to Jesus over the charcoal fire, you know. Mm. Friends, have you got anything? You know, yeah, you're, yeah. you're turning to your sons, you're turning to your daughters. How are you going? You know, mm. well, listen, uh, Throw your, throw your net on the other side. Throw your net on the other side. Do you love me? Feed my love. Yeah. Like so the, the liturgy really of the domestic church has three parts, but they also mimic the prophetic priest and kingly mm -hmm. dimension of, of the mission of Christ, of Christ prophet, priest, and king. The three rites of the domestic church are tied to the priestly, prophetic, and kingly function of Christ and his mission to redeem the world and to sanctify the world. So the family is not just a sociological unit. Mm -hmm. It is at its core an integral part of the divine plan of salvation, the salvation of all people inviting them to be holy as the heavenly father is holy. And so every family, insofar as they are participating consciously or unconsciously, perfectly or imperfectly mm -hmm. in the liturgy of domestic church life, they are working for the salvation, knowingly or unknowingly. They're they they building better families they're building better societies. They're building better worlds, knowingly or unknowingly. And, and this is why this plan of salvation is, came to us through the family, and the plan of redemption comes through the Holy Family. So through the right of Christian relationships, which is the first one, to the right of Christian relationship, the family is given the Trinity as a model of love. And love here is giving of self to another completely, holding nothing back to yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The highest ideal of love is Trinitarian love. And the, the, the best expression, concrete expression you will ever see of that in, in the, in, on earth is married love. Married love that is self-sacrificing, 
that is giving of itself completely to the other, holding nothing back. And, and, and in, in the fruitfulness of, 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 of children, marriage learns and takes that love to the next level of, of engagement. And so the first level, which is a, the, the family, which is a Christian relationships, we're talking about the family and the Trinitarian love. And, and that, that is what really the, the meditation is on. So this is a daily consecration that fulfills Paul's injunction, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. He continues, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mm -hmm. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Romans 12, 1 to 2. Mm -hmm. So this is the priestly dimension of, of the liturgy. And how is this priestly dimension happening? Well, consecrating your, your life every single day to the giving of yourself in love to your, to your spouse, to your children, or to your parents, that is the beginning, that is the consecration, that is the, the sacrificial element of the liturgy. And, and, and what you're saying here too is, which is critical, it comes out of Romans 12, 1 to 2, <clears throat> is do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed oh. by the renewing of your mind because the world is not telling about us about this self-sacrificial love at all. Oh, no. the, the world is into selfishness, into if it feels good, do it, into satisfy yourself, into do it for you, me first. And, and what, what the, the liturgy of domestic church life is, is really about putting God first, and the other second. So God is always first. Yeah. The spouse is always second. The children are third. And many people reverse that order and want to put the children second. No, no, no. God is first. The spouse is second. The children are third. Yeah. Yeah. The, the children find the greatest um, consolation and security yes. when they are seeing the love of the spouses as the first love. Yeah, yeah. Or the second, second love. Second love, yeah. When you see the love of, of God as the first love and Correct. the love of the spouses as the second love, the children feel more secure. Absolutely correct. You know? More secure. When, when you try to make the children the first love, you don't give them security. Because yeah. you, the, you don't have enough proper boundaries on that, on, that, on that modeling for them. Yeah. And they see the division right there between daddy and mommy. Because yeah. I come before daddy or I come before mommy. All right. It should never be. It should be God, daddy, and mommy. Houses. Yeah. Then sure. Yeah. And and but but that is that is the worship. That is the worship. As Paul tells us in Romans, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. And and in that sense, the, the nuptial union of the of the couple is the liturgy. They're offering their bodies as a living sacrifice to each other and, and to God or to God through each other. That, that's, so that's the priestly dimension of the liturgy. Here, all the mundane stuff of domestic life, when, we, when it is lifted up, and that's the key, eh? yeah, yeah. when it is lifted up, becomes a liturgical act offered to Christ the high priest. Wow. And, and there is, the, this is a true worship of the domestic church in its priestly dimension. Wow. All those little sacrificial acts which families are, are invited to participate in every single day. That's the, that's the liturgy that we're talking about there. I, I, in, in one of the parishes, I asked the altar servers, to start something by asking every server to do a sacrificial act every day, just one. After a little while, 
when the leader of the group met with the parents, one of the parents said, you know, my two children now fighting to wash up the wares. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and don't think I'm quarreling about what I see. <laughs> We have to teach it to the kids, but but we have to model it. Yes. But that's the liturgy. That's the priestly liturgy of the domestic church. And, and this is the true worship in the do domestic church in its priestly dimension. The prophetic dimension focuses on the rites that call each member of the family to the inner transformation through the mundane stuff. So Catechism of the Church 905, what the PopCats team says, when Christian families create meaningful rituals for working, for playing, for talking, for praying together, they prophetically call each other to cultivate Christian attitude, attitudes towards work, fun, relationship, and faith. The right of, and, and that second right which is the prophetic right, the, the right of, of really calling each other to the best that you can in the mundane stuff, yeah. in, in all the mundane stuff. That's, that's the power of the domestic church liturgy. Uh, uh, going over that, that in terms of we're looking at the prophetic dimension, right? Mm -hmm. It focuses on rituals that call each member of the family to inner transformation through the mundane stuff. I think I was even hearing um, Bishop Robert Lianos talk about that in his interview in Rome. You know, talking yeah. about the, hey, the little mundane stuff because that's the, the one little, that little stuff. Yeah, that's that's where that's where we either lift it up and sanctify it. Yeah, or it goes down. Yeah, and you get the lowest common denominator. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody on a selfish selfishness binge because everybody about themselves mm -hmm. and about nobody else. But but when it is lifted up and everybody is about self-sacrificing to the other, the priestly liturgy, then our work, our play, our prayer, and and all the dimensions of, of, of domestic life become punctuated with rituals that help us to lift it up. Yeah. And and call each other to become the best we can. I have a whole new dimension of looking at this thing. You know? I'm just letting mm -hmm. you know because you, I, I, I'm watching. You know, I'm watching from from close to where I am. I sing full of words. <laughs> you, know I mean? well, you know what lifting up look like now. Eh? <laughs> no, what God? When you're singing this time, when you're singing, lift Jesus higher. Is every spoon, every plate, <laughs> every cup again <laughs> like You only get this on Trinity TV. Conversations <laughs> with Archbishop J. We are looking at the domestic church, and here, here's it. It's the connections and configuration. So they are yes. where we sing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They have clothes on the ground. They have grass to be mowed. They have, they have dust in the corner. Yeah. They have. I could keep going, you know. No, I don't go, don't go anymore. <laughs> they, they have that, that pot, that cook the pillow, that they, they, they didn't get properly clean yet. They have the dog that didn't get bathed. We could keep going. But here's the third one. So remember, it, it's the right, the right of relationship, mm -hmm. the right of, of rituals, which is how we work, how we play, how we pray, how we do all of these things as a prophetic dimension. And the third is the right of reaching out, which is a kingly dimension, which re reminds the family that authentic spirituality is always be beyond itself and beyond this family. So if God is first, if the spouse is second, if the children are third, then reaching out to the other is, is, is always fourth. And who is the neighbor? The one who is in need of, 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 of neighborliness. Not the one living next door necessary, but the one who is most in need of, of a neighbor. And, and, and in that way, we have the right of reaching out. So it says that the right of reaching out suggests practical ways every family can be God's blessings to each other and the world. Additionally, 
the practice encouraged by this right can help families discern the unique mission and charism God has for their particular domestic church. And I'm thinking here so much of, you know, families going out as families, you know, to take food for the poor, to work in, you know, to work in St. Vincent de Paul, you know, and say, well, okay, you know, we have a, 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 a Meals on Wheels, and the Meals yeah. on Wheels, the whole family participates Goes. in Meals on yeah. Wheels. Yeah, I know a grandfather who every Christmas rounded up the grandchildren and, and went to give hampers to poor families. And he said, I want my grandchildren to see how privileged they are, and I want them to start understanding from the time they, they, they're conscious enough that the generosity is the way this family works. So it's, you know, in every family, how we give and how we reach out is vital. And that's the kingly dimension of the, of the threefold mission of Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How we give, how we reach out. And, that, and that's important because when a family doesn't give and doesn't reach out, it turns in on itself. Yes. Yeah. And then, then the child believes that them and the, the device is what it will, is all about. And, and then we, we raise a generation of selfish children and we ask, how did that happen? Well, we did it. We, we have done it. And they didn't do it to themselves. We have done it. Because we haven't helped families to reach out. I remember my, my father calling us and saying, well, we're going to be giving so-and-so to charity. Is that a time when he wasn't working? Eh? <laughs> he was ill and yeah. had, to, had to resign his job. But every now and again, he said, okay, we'll be giving this. And, and I was in shock. Yeah. Oh, we get our money from well, God is supplying, yeah. but we're going to be generous with it, and and that's that's important that we that that reaching out that it's it's not about us. There's a grandmother who needs a little bit of help and care. There's a old aunt. There's a uncle. There's a you know. There's another family that reaching out is so is so vital. I know another family that every Christmas time before Christmas came, the children had to go through and decide which ones you're keeping and which ones you're not keeping. Yeah. Have you used that for the last three months? Yeah. We're giving it away. And all that were in good order were spruced up and given away. And when the new toys came, choose two <laughs> to give out. <laughs> you can't choose two that he wants to. This is about you can... That air happening is love, Babali. You make a joke, and they but, would need But that's you reaching out. We yes, have, reaching we, out. You have more than enough. Correct. We're going to be sharing. Correct. We're going to be sharing with families who don't have enough. That's you reaching out. And, and that's why the reaching out is, is so vital. So the key message, the domestic church is a real church with a priesthood and a liturgy instituted by God for the redemption and salvation of all people. The action step, consider to what extent your family is on the pilgrimage to become a domestic church. Make one commitment in each of the three areas, relationships, rights, and reaching out. Make a commitment in each in, to, to one of each of these. What's your scripture reading? Romans 12 now. <laughs> I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. You hear that? The living hear that? sacrifice is what you say there. This is your true and proper worship. Let me use the word differently. This is your true and proper liturgy. Amen. So the true and proper liturgy is offering your bodies as a living sacrifice to God. Take us out with our prayer. By the way, just to let everybody know, that is Romans 12, 1 to 21. Eh? So read the whole thing. Yes. Read the whole yeah, thing. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's a living sacrifice is the headliner. Father, we thank you for love and we thank you for the domestic church. And we thank you, Lord, for the liturgy of the domestic church. And we pray as we become more conscious of this liturgy in our everydayness and in our everyday life, that we may learn to give you more and more of our love 
and, and to love each other with, with a greater capacity for love so that we may be the, our trees bringing your Trinitarian love all through our land, all through our nation, and all through our world. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Praise be to God. Thank you so much, Archbishop J. Don't forget, you can get your free book from Archbishop J. Eh? Your free book. Just go on to catholictt.org. Thanks a lot. God bless everyone. God bless.